Star Wars The Bad Batch, Season 3, Episode 15, Series Finale. The cavalry has arrived. We are here. This is the end of Star Wars The Bad Batch. It's been running now for a good three-ish years now, about three years. And it is at its end at the end of Season 3. This is where they're wrapping it up. And it's a little longer than I uh, anticipated it being. For some reason, I just thought they were just going to whimper out on a short little episode. But thankfully, they did actually give us an extended episode. It's like 40-something minutes. It's about the length of two episodes in one. So they did give us a little bit more time to breathe there in the end. But this, this is it. The series finale. The cavalry has arrived. The Bad Batch has reached its end. So, let's get into this episode. So, Bad Batch, we got Wrecker, Crosshair Hunter. They're out there still in the forest by Tantus, and they want to get into the facility to rescue Omega. Meanwhile, Echo is inside getting help with Emery, and they're going to try and also rescue Omega. That's the whole mission. So, you can get to see Hemlock here interacting with Rampart because Rampart was captured last episode in the forest so now he's a prisoner we get a little bit of an interaction between it's kind of interesting the interaction between these two because these are like the two villains of the show I suppose the two bad guys and uh you got that little you got a little scene with them kind of it, it's it's bickering back and forth a little bit but it's like Hemlock basically berating him about how you you have no idea you know, the, the facility and the projects that I'm working on. You have no idea what these clones are about and whatnot. So it's just two different sides to the, the Empire here of what the Bad Batch have been dealing with. The, the Rampart stuff was more the clone cloning stuff and transitioning from the cloning stuff. And then the Hemlock stuff is more the cloning, you know, Project Necromancer thing that... Uh, Palpatine wants. So as we get to see that, we get to cut to the scene with Emery and Echo. They're in there trying to figure out where Omega is and how they can get inside to help Omega. And as they're talking about Omega, we cut to Omega. So she has a plan. She has a plan to escape. We saw last episode she, she kind of found like an exit area in her room. Very conveniently easy to get into that wall section there, but whatever so she gets in there she tells them the plan and she has a plan to take over the droid that, that comes in and you know does things and whatnot she has a plan to take over the droid so they they lure the droid into the room she rewires the droid and she uses it to take out the doctor like you know inject the doctor with some sort of you know thing and knocks the doctor out and they begin their escape and they go up the hatch that omega found so as they're doing that, Emery is still coming back into the room with Echo now, and she's going to help Echo get to Omega. But as she gets into the room, Omega will not be there. So Omega's plan, we saw last episode as well, that the, the Zillow Beast creature is there at Tantus. So it was pretty predictable. That, that was one of the most predictable things for this episode going into this one, is she's going to release the Zillow Beast like, why else would you have it there in the plot and the story if you're not just going to release the damn thing and cause chaos? And that is exactly what she does. So she manages to, of course, get a hold of some equipment and she releases the Zillow Beast and it begins to cause chaos. So Emery and Echo, they reach the facility, the room, the big white room. Hemlock is in there and they realize that Omega has escaped and he tells her to go find her. So we get some scenes of the Zillow Beast wrecking havoc through the facility and breaking its way out, causing a bunch of openings for the Bad Batch to get inside or someone to escape. So it's basically just a plot device there to have the Zillow Beast create a bunch of entrances and exits for our, our characters. So it escapes and it just wanders off. And we don't really see the Zillow Beast again. They say they're going to go after it, but... We never see it again. It just wanders off into the forest, and its plot purpose has been served. So Hemlock is starting to panic, and he's got this one last plan. So he enters this room, and there's a bunch of different pods ready. And he opens the pods, and there's these clones inside. It's like these weird secret elite force of clones. And they, they come out like all creepy-like. They're all ready to fight the Bad Batch and get rid of them once and for all. And it, it's super strange. They, they build it up like it's something like really, really crazy. This is like Hemlock's final thing that he has set in place for an emergency. So they all walk out, and there's these four guys... 
but I'll just say right now they're pretty irrelevant at the end. They 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 are nobody. They never we never find out if they're anybody special. They're just random clones that were enhanced slightly, I guess, and they can fight better and whatnot for Hemlock, and they send them out to go fight the Bad Batch. So, they go out to fight the Bad Batch, and also that Imperial Informant guy who's been running around the last several episodes, who there's so much focus on him, you think, oh, maybe we'll find out who it is? Well, we get to that a little later as well. Uh, he does fight along with that group of clones that Hemlock unleashed. So, as they're fighting the Bad Batch, they kind of get beat pretty easily. Uh, so they're a pretty formidable force for the Bad Batch. The remaining members, I mean, Wrecker's hurt, and they're kind of trying to sneak on board. It, it kind of makes sense that they took him over. And while they're doing that, they also cut Crosshair's hand off. Just because. That, that, that would solve his problem. So I guess they solved Crosshair's hand problem by just cutting it off. I mean, that works, I guess. But yeah, they, they just cut his hand off. And for the rest of the episode, he has no hand. And... They don't even address his hand problem anymore. He just has no hand. They cut it off and he's good. So I guess that was their solution for Crosshair's hand issue. Because he even had it a little bit again in the beginning of the episode. And he, they just cut it off. I mean, that that's one way to do it, I guess. I, not, I didn't anticipate them to just cut it off. But I, it works. So as Emery and Echo are going through the facility, they run across the Bad Batch literally getting escorted through the facility to you know be imprisoned by Hemlock and Echo realizes that his brothers have now been captured but his mission is still to go find Omega and get the kids out before he goes back for his brothers so he does go find Omega and the kids and he lets the kids escape with Emery so Emery flies off with the coordinates to the Pabu Island. So Emery leaves with the kids, but Omega stays behind with Echo to go and rescue the rest of the Bad Batch. So Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair are captured by Hemlock. They're trying to like mind warp them a little bit again and maybe make them serve the Empire. I don't know. He was trying to do some weird stuff with their mind, but it doesn't really last long. So the mission now is to go get them rescued from Hemlock. Before that though, Echo does actually free all the prisoners there with Omega, including Nala Say and Rampart, and they're all there in this facility, this prison area here. And he talks to all the clones, he gets them all ready to fight, and they all join in, in the fight to go fight Hemlock. So it's his final uprising on Tantus to go and save the Bad Batch, Omega, just get the hell out of there. So we get one final scene with Nalase and Omega. I say final scene because of what happens next with Nalase. But we got one final scene here with Nalase and Omega, and it's like, I need to go destroy the evidence of Hemlock's work and, you know, the evidence of Omega and her blood and whatnot. So she wants to go back to the facility and make sure that all that evidence and the information is destroyed. Meanwhile, Hemlock is called to his office because Governor Tarkin is calling for him. So we get to see Tarkin once again calling over Hologram, and he's starting to ask Hemlock some questions like, what the hell is going on at your facility? What is going on? You got you got issues going all over the place. The facility is collapsing. You got Clone Force 99 breaking through and almost destroying everything with the facility and just causing chaos. I mean, the freaking Zillow Beast is also running free now. So Tarkin says, I'm going to make a visit. I'm coming by. So that also puts Hemlock on higher alert. And now he is very determined to get this thing fixed up as much as he can. So meanwhile, Nala Say runs off to go and get rid of the information on Project Necromancer and Omega, and then Rampart follows her. So he doesn't go along with all the other clones and whatnot. He goes off to follow Nala Say secretly. And while Nala Say is actively trying to destroy all the evidence of Project Necromancer and Omega, he confronts Nala Say and he basically turns on her. I don't know if he ever really turned on her. He was never really an ally to begin with, but he points a blaster at her and says, I want to know everything about Project Necromancer, and he's thinking that this can help him gain an advantage for the, you know, for the Empire. Maybe he'll get something from the Empire with this with this knowledge and information, and, uh, you know, on Nala Say and whatnot. He can get this back for them. So, he's turning on all of them. He's turning on Nala Say, and he wants to get as much information as possible about this project. But as Nala Say is doing that, she did grab a thermal detonator earlier on while she was walking through the facility. So she has this plan. She's going to just blow it all up 
you know, at this this final last bit, this final plan to just blow it all up. If she can't do it the way she wants to, it looks like she's just going to get rid of it all. And that that's what she's going to do. So before that happens, though, we do get to see the uprising with the clones fighting this, like, elite force of clones that Hemlock unleashed. Gets to see some fighting. A lot of the clones die. I think most of them really do. And Omega escapes and unlocks the hatches for the cells that the Bad Batch are in. So she unleashes, unleashes them. They're starting to wake up. Omega's captured once again by Hemlock. And then we cut to the scene again with Nala Se, Rampart. And it doesn't last long. She says, my information is not going to fall into the hands of the Empire. And she's determined to make it that way. So her thermal detonator is about to go off. And Rampart shoots her, so she actually dies before her thermal detonator goes off. So she falls to the ground, the detonator rolls towards Rampart, and he has almost no time to react. Boom. So Emerald Rampart is dead. Nala Se is now dead. They are both dead, these characters. So, I mean, if you want to look at casualties for the episode, these are going to be some of the big ones. Uh, especially going into the ending of the episode, these are these are some of the big ones. So those two characters are gone. Nala Se is probably the bigger one. She's been a much bigger character overall in Star Wars rather than Rampart. Like, I don't really care about Rampart, but Nala Se is now gone. And I would presume that is the last Kaminoan, I think. So that she's gone now. But we cut to the Bad Batch and they are now free. So they're going to go and fight the, fight the Empire, fight Hemlock, and, you know, try to get Omega back. Hemlock does escape with Omega and he latches himself, like, handcuffs, handcuffs her to him. So they're, like, linked together so he can escape with her and she doesn't leave his side. So he's going to try and run out and get on a ship and get out of the facility. So meanwhile... They do have one final like showdown with those informants and even the Imperial informant, that's who I'm calling him, uh, through these last few episodes now. He comes up, he fights them once again, and he just gets killed by Hunter. And you're thinking, okay, rip the helmet off. Who is, who is this clone? It's got to be somebody we know, right? No, no, no. So it's nobody we know. I mean, I don't really know if I care all that much. There were some theories. Maybe, oh God, maybe it's tech. You know, maybe tech is alive. No, it's not tech. It's nobody. We have no idea who it was. Probably just a random clone that is kind of irrelevant to the story. So I will say the focus on him in the earlier episodes, it was really, really strange because his role in this episode was no different than any of those, those other like super clones that he had unleashed. He was just there working with them and then he gets killed. So he just dies, so he's dead now, and we never see him again. We never find out if it was anyone we know, so I would presume it never was. We see Hemlock with Omega, and they're trying to now escape on a ship, so they're running across this big uh, structure. Hemlock's ship arrives, but just as the ship is lowering down to escape, the Bad Batch, Crosshair, and Hunter make their way to the structure as well and blow up his ship, so now he has no escape. It's a standoff between Crosshair, Hunter, and Hemlock. So Hemlock is kind of holding a blaster to Omega, and he's threatening them. This is the big standoff, like what is going to happen here? We also get to see Omega kind of tinkering with the handcuffs that he she is like attached to Hemlock with. So they're waiting for Omega to you know release the handcuffs, and just as she's trying to do it, uh, Crosshair does end up shooting the handcuffs at the end. And then manages to blast Hemlock. And that is the end of Hemlock. So Hemlock is killed. He falls off the structure and dies. And then Omega reunites with Crosshair and Hunter. And guess what? That's it. That's it. That, that, that's the end of that general story. They go back to their ship. And they, they escape the facility. They, they win. They, they escape and win the day. There were some deaths. Hemlock died. Nala Se died. Rampart died. But generally, like, the Bad Batch themselves, outside of tech from last season, they're fine. They're alive. And, look, I'm kind of one of those guys. I know some people like to say you don't need people to die. These characters aren't really around anymore, even in, like, Rebels or whatnot. You, you have to explain it somehow. And I guess they're just going to be on the island. But nobody died. I think you could have maybe killed one of them again. That's just my take, though. Maybe maybe it just didn't need to happen. It's not that big of a deal, really. But 
I think maybe one of them dying could have made it feel a little more important. I don't know. But uh, as they leave, the Empire arrives to Tantus. And look, look, there's one thing in Star Wars that never gets old, and it is seeing a Star Destroyer appear on screen from hyperspace. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful sight. No matter what Star Wars, I'm, I'm, I, I just love it so much. The uh, the, the, the freaking presence of a Star Destroyer appearing on screen from hyperspace is glorious. It really is. So as they arrive to Tantus, it is Tarkin, and he comes in to see the remnants and the remains of what happened here at Tantus, and he learns that Hemlock is dead. The facility has been basically ransacked and destroyed. The whole entire facility is just a wreck now. The, the Zillow Beast escaped, and he decides... He's obviously higher ranked than Hemlock ever was. He decides to put all the funding and money from Project Necromancer towards Project Stardust. Stardust is obviously the project of the Death Star, which we see in Rogue One. And that is the big project that Tarkin is overseeing with Director Krennic in Rogue One. So that's kind of the whole... They always like to tease a little Stardust thing. They always say Stardust now as the reference to the Death Star. So that is Tarkin's big thing. And that's kind of like the big tease there at the end is just... We're going to work on the Death Star now. So that's that's where we end it with Tarkin. And there's not really much more Imperial stuff. That's it. That's where the, the, the Imperial stuff ends in this show. Is Tarkin just kind of wraps up the Necromancer project for now. He, he calls it end. He calls it as an end. And they're going to fund the Death Star going forward. So we get to see one big final scene. Emery is now on the island of Pabu with the Bad Batch. You can see Echo some more. Uh, so she's just with them now. She's presumably just going to live there now. So cool. Uh, we do get one final scene with uh, Omega and Hunter. And then Wrecker and Crosshair come and sit down. It's just like one big happy scene, really. And that's it. It cuts to black, really. There's still one final scene. But it generally, this is the end of the story there for the episode. They just live happily ever after on the island. That's it. So, for people who love happy endings that are just perfect and everything went right, basically, hey, it, this is the episode for you. It really is. For me, I think it kill, still could have been a good ending for most of the characters, but still some sacrifice. I'm sorry. You don't need people to die. Like, But I, I just think... The circumstances of everything, I guess you could say Nala Say died destroying the evidence. I guess if you want to look at it that way. But I just, I feel like somebody should have died this episode. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. I think someone should have died. Wrecker was kind of hurt through the episode. So, I mean, they could have killed him maybe. Uh, I, Wrecker or Crosshair for sure. I was looking forward to seeing what Crosshair's story would look like in the end, and it really just is pretty basic. He got his hand cut off, and he's all good now, I guess. He's just with them now. So, I mean, I like Crosshair. Still one of my still my favorite character of the series, for sure. His, his, his presence in the last few episodes was just kind of like... He's just kind of there now, and his story's kind of wrapped up. He's just good now with them, which is fine. But it's just... That's it. That's, that's the end of the story. So... That's the end of the Bad Batch's story. Then it cuts to black. Then we cut to one more scene. So we're still on the island of Pabu, I believe. But it's in the future. We get to see a random character that we don't really know just yet. Uh, looming in the shadows. And looking up at the island. Uh, and then she enters a cave. And we start to understand what is going on here. We are jumping forward in the future just a little bit. Can't really tell. Obviously several years have passed now. I can't really tell exactly who it is until we actually zoom into the characters and it is hunter and omega hunter is now an older man i don't think he's like that much older he's obviously older i don't think it's like a major major time jump but it is a time jump hunter is older he's got some gray now and omega is a grown woman i believe so she's just all grown up now and she is ready to leave and fight in the rebellion. That's why I'm saying it's not like that far in the future. The rebellion's still out there. They're going to fight. So she's older now. She's like grown up and she's ready to go fight. That's basically how the ending is. So Hunter doesn't really want her to leave. He still wants to protect her. So they have this one final scene just sitting there. Omega's ready to go fight for the rebellion and Hunter doesn't want to let her go just yet. 
So we get that, I guess, heartwarming scene there at the end with these two characters. I mean, for this show, I guess it's fine because that's kind of what this show became is just uh, the relationship with Hunter and Omega and just trying to keep her safe as much as possible. So it works for the ending of this show, I think. It really does. Um, I don't think it's anything too thrilling to me. Like, I, I honestly, I don't have much feeling towards the character of Omega or Hunter. But I think if you're a really big fan of this show, which I kind of feel like mid on the show, like it's all right. I think if you're a major fan of the show and you love all these characters, like pretty, like a lot, I think this last scene will be pretty, pretty awesome for you. If you really love the, this show and all the characters, I think it's a pretty decent scene, but it's her basically just leaving a hunter behind and she's gonna go and fight in the rebellion so she gets one last look with hunter i'm sure she'll be back meet up with him and the bad batch and whatnot it seems like the crosshair and wrecker are still alive i think uh we did get a mention of them but they're not actually there in the scene but she does leave she looks at hunter one more time we get to see tech's glasses on her ship so it's just like a little nod like there's there's tech the memory of tech and uh she flies off Hunter watches her fly off, and we get one last look at the island of Pabu, I think. I think that's what it's called. So they're living happily on the island, and that is how the series ends. It ends with Omega going to fight in the Rebellion, and yeah, that's it. So the series ends very happily, generally. Now, I think the pro I don't know if the Project Necromancer stuff is explored. I think it's mentioned in Mandalorian. I think it was. Or Ahsoka. I don't know if it was one of them. I thought it was mentioned in some other shows that they've had. I don't know if that project gets picked back up or not. I have no idea. I think it still leads to sequel stuff. But at the moment, I guess in this story, it was kind of wrecked for the for the Emperor. And Hemlock died. So that, that storyline at that point in that timeline, it is completely just wrecked. So I guess that's not going forward for now. Um, obviously we end up with the Palpatine clone crap in the sequels, which I'm not a fan of at all, but I I think they're going to try and go ahead with some sort of cloning stuff even more with all these shows. They're going to try to explain it somehow, but for now that has ended. I think the grown-up Omega thing is fine. I think the last scene with Hunter was pretty good. I wish we would have seen more with Wrecker and Crosshair, and even Echo at the very end there. I wish they would have all been there. I know it's more with Hunter and Omega generally. Like, it makes sense these two characters of all of them are interacting there at the end. But I, I wish we would have seen all of them there. Because Crosshair was a very heavily focused character of this series. And um, it would have been cool to see him there at the very last scene. But, I mean, we didn't really... We just didn't see much of them after the battle. After the whole entire fight that they had they just kind of sat down by them and that was it for them so we'll probably never see them again if i'm being honest but uh the final scene was fine if you really love the characters i just think it could have been a little bit more devastating that sounds very dark and gloomy and depressing i didn't I, I i'm not saying that it couldn't have had a somewhat happy ending but i think it needed some doom and gloom this is not a good time in the the state of the galaxy it's a dark dark time and the whole point is that it's a super dark time and the Empire is this force to be reckoned with. It's supposed to be. And Luke is supposed to come in one day and save the day. That's how it goes. So I know it's a very small story. It's a very small group of people. And I guess they got their happy ending in a way with the, with the rebellion. She's going to go fight in the rebellion. They get to live on this island. That's their happy ending. And they didn't really save the galaxy, obviously. So, it works, but for me personally, I just wanted to see a little bit more dark stuff. I just want to see some really, really dark stuff. I, I, I don't think Star Wars needs to be all dark, doom and gloom, but for me, I just felt like this show would have done that. I think it, would have, I think it should have done that. Um, but I suppose, in contrast, even with The Clone Wars Season 7, if you want to compare it with that... Uh, it is a happier ending than that for sure. The Clone Wars Season 7 is definitely a dark ending. So if you want to look at it in that perspective, sure. It's a little bit of a nicer feeling there in the end. But generally overall, The Bad Batch, I think it was its best in Season 1. Like 
probably the first few episodes, really. Uh, I did not like season two. I don't think that much. They just did more Sid stuff. Season three did pick it up. It's probably the next best season after the first one. But I just feel like there was so much storyline out there that was left untouched. Like, there's so much stuff with Rex and just things out there. Like, even, like, the stuff with Crosshair's hand and all that stuff. It really wasn't explained well. And there's just things that were left untold that I think they could have. It didn't really feel rushed, but it just felt incomplete. And I don't know what they're going to do going forward. I don't know what more animation projects they have outside of the Tales of the Empire thing coming up. I don't know what their, their future plans are for Disney. Again, it's Disney Star Wars. I don't know. I don't know how well this show even did for them. So I don't know if they're going to go forward and make anything else. We're going to have to wait and see for that. But I will say, I think this show was definitely one of their stronger shows in comparison of their other shows in general with Ahsoka, uh, Mandalorian, Season 3. God, that was just terrible. Obi-Wan Kenobi. God awful. So if you're going to compare it to some of those shows, it's definitely better than those for sure. There's some really good moments in this show. I just think there's a lot of very mid moments as well. And it's just not as Clone Wars grand as I think it could have been. But uh, that is The Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 15, Series Finale overall. Omega's now grown up, going to fight in the Rebellion. Maybe we'll see her again at some point. Wouldn't surprise me. They throw her into some random cameo and some show later on. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But uh, Bad Batch, it's over. Tales of the Empire is next. And that one just looks a little more interesting to me, personally. And, um, yeah, that is it for the Bad Batch. I think it ended okay. Could have been better for me, personally. But I think it was a, a decent ending for these characters and kind of what their story was.